Hi, so in this session we are going to cover heme synthesis porphyria. Okay, and these are the objectives for this session. At the end of the session, you should be able to outline this pathway of synthesis of heme, explain the regulation of heme synthesis, then explain the biochemical basis, clinical features, and treatment of porphyria. Where is heme present? Heme is present in hemoglobin. Okay, the hemoglobin is made up of four globin chains: alpha one, alpha two. Beta 1, beta 2, and heme is present in each of the globin chains. There are four heme molecules in one hemoglobin molecule. What is heme made up of? Heme is a tetrapyrrole ring like this with iron in the center. Okay, now we are going to see how this heme is synthesized in the cell. Okay, fine. So, why do we need heme? Yes, it is part of hemoglobin. Does any other protein need heme? Yes. Those proteins are called as hemoproteins. These are heme containing proteins. Okay. Hemoglobin. Myoglobin is a hemoprotein. Cytochrome P450 monooxygenase, group of enzymes which are present in smooth endoplasmic reticulum, especially in the liver. They are made up of heme ion. Okay. Then we need cytochrome C oxidase, which is a complex four of electron transport chain. Okay. Also requires heme. Okay. Then there are certain enzymes which are involved in oxidative species scavenging okay that is the catalase nitric oxide synthase and tryptophan pyrolase they also have heme as a prosthetic group okay so these are the hemoprotein okay not only hemoglobin there are other proteins which are also requires heme okay fine so what is heme as i already told you heme consists of a porphyry nucleus which contains iron at its center so this is a porphyry nucleus this structure what you see here is a porphyry ring okay and Iron will be coordinated at the center. Okay, see here, iron. So to be specific, this heme is made up of tetrapyrrole rings, forming linked to form a cyclic tetrapyrrole. Okay, fine. Now, where are the where does heme synthesis happen? Heme synthesis happens predominantly in bone marrow. Greater than eighty percentage of daily heme production occurs in the bone marrow. Okay which is used predominantly for hemoglobin production, followed by liver. 20% of your daily heme synthesis happens in, in the liver for cytochrome B450 enzymes. Then almost all cells are capable of synthesizing heme because almost all cells will have some enzymes or proteins or hemoproteins which require heme as prosthetic group. Okay. When you see bone marrow is a predominant contributor followed by liver, almost all cells have the capacity to synthesize heme. Okay, fine. The precursor for heme synthesis includes two things. Glycine, which is an amino acid. Then, succinyl CoA, which is an intermediate of TCA cycle. Okay. So, these are the two important precursors of heme synthesis. That is, these are the starting materials for heme synthesis. Glycine and succinyl CoA. Okay. The first step. Okay. We are not going to cover each and every step of heme synthesis okay we are just going to cover only the important steps okay which are going to be clinically relevant okay so step one step one is formation of something called delta amino levulinic acid ala okay so the enzyme responsible for this is called ala synthase okay or else delta amino levulinic acid synthase okay where is it present it is present in mitochondria does it require any cofactor? Yes, it requires a vitamin as a cofactor. Which vitamin? Pyridoxal phosphate. Okay. So, this is the reaction. Succinyl CoA combines with lysine in the presence of ALA synthase enzyme, which requires PLP as a cofactor to form something called delta amino levulinic acid. Okay. So, this is the first step in your first step in heme synthesis. Okay. And this enzyme is a rate limiting enzyme of heme synthesis. ALA synthase is the rate limiting enzyme of heme synthesis. That is, this is the enzyme which is going to determine the rate of the reaction. Okay. So, this is a committed step of this pathway. ALA synthase. Okay. Next. So, ALA will be formed and this ALA undergoes multiple reactions, multiple steps. Okay. It undergoes one reaction to form something called porphobilinogen. Okay. Which will be converted to uroporphyrinogen 1, which will be converted to uroporphyrinogen 3. It will be converted to coproporphyrinogen. Okay. Then it will again enter into mitochondria where it will be converted to protoporphyrinogen 9, protoporphyrin 9, ultimately it will be converted to heme. 
Okay, fine. So from this slide, it is evident that heme synthesis occurs both in cytoplasm as well as in mitochondria. First step occurs in mitochondria and the last two steps occurs in mitochondria. Remaining steps occurs in cytoplasm. Okay, this is one of the pathway where both mitochondrium and cytoplasm is involved. Okay, like urea cycle. It also happens partly in mitochondria and partly in cytoplasm. Okay, so ALA undergoes multiple steps, multiple reactions to ultimately form heme. Okay, fine. So, I say I already told you ALA synthase is the rate limiting enzyme of this pathway. Okay. And these are the enzymes responsible for the rest of the reactions. ALA will be converted to porphobilinogen by an enzyme called ALA dehydratase. Okay. And this porphobilinogen will be converted to uroporphyrinogen 1 by, by an enzyme called uroporphyrinogen 1 synthase. Then it's easy. Uroporphyrinogen 3 synthase. Then it's called uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase. Then coproporphyrinogen oxidase. Okay. Protoporphyrinogen oxidase. Then ferrochelatase. This is the enzyme which incorporates iron into the heme. Okay. All the enzymes that are highlighted in yellow are the mitochondrial enzymes. Okay. Fine. So this is one point. Second point, as I said, ALA synthase is the rate limiting enzyme. So it is subjected to feedback inhibition by heme. When you have a lot of heme in your body, that is going to inhibit this enzyme. ALA synthase. Okay. So, this is a classical feedback inhibition that you will see in this pathway. Okay, fine. So, these are the enzymes involved in heme synthesis pathway. Okay, so now regulation of heme synthesis. Okay, ALA synthase, which is a rate limiting enzyme of heme synthesis, exists in two isoforms ALA synthase 1 and ALA synthase 2. Okay, these two isoforms differ in certain aspects. What are the differences? ALA synthase 1, which is found predominantly in the liver. It is always expressed. Okay, fine. Next, it is regulated by free heme, as I told you in the last slide. When there is a lot of heme, that is going to inhibit ALA synthase 1. Okay, and through some unknown mechanism, glucose can also inhibit ALA synthase 1. Okay, what's the mechanism? Feedback inhibition and repression. That's it. Okay, now we are going to see the second ALA synthase, which is also called as ALA synthase 2, which is found in the bone marrow. Okay, where this is the enzyme that is rate limiting in the heme synthesis occurring in the bone marrow. Okay, here heme is known to upregulate this enzyme. Okay, as well as the iron levels. Okay, ALA synthase 2 is not subjected to feedback inhibition by heme. Okay, this is the difference between ALA synthase 1 and ALA synthase 2. ALA synthase 1 is subjected to feedback inhibition by heme but not ALA synthase 2, which is found in the bone marrow. Okay, this you should know. Okay, so these are the difference between ALA synthase 1 and ALA synthase 2. Location is different and regulation is different. Okay, fine. Now, we are going to the disease condition called porphyrias. Okay, what are porphyrias? Porphyrias are a group of inherited or acquired disorders caused by abnormalities in the pathways of heme synthesis. So, if there is a problem in the synthesis of heme, then the porphyria will be manifested. Okay. So, this porphyria can be classified into multiple ways based upon multiple reasons. For example, they can be classified based on the clinical picture like acute porphyria and cutaneous porphyria. Okay. Next, site of enzyme deficiency. It can be Enzyme deficiency can be in the erythropoietic cells, so that's erythropoietic porphyria, or in the liver cells into liver hepatic porphyria. Cause this could be hereditary or acquired. Okay, so these are the ways of classifying porphyrias based upon the clinical picture as acute and cutaneous. Based on the enzyme deficiency as erythropoietic and hepatic, okay, and based upon the cause, okay, as either hereditary or acquired. Okay, first we are going to see acute porphyria. Acute porphyria will develop whenever the enzymes that are responsible for the initial steps are defective. Okay, we have seen multiple steps. ALA synthase is the first step, then ALA dehydratase, then the other enzymes. If the enzymes are involved in the initial steps of the por heme synthesis are defective, that will lead to something called acute porphyria. Okay, for example, porphobilinogen will be converted to form uroporphyrinogen 1. But this enzyme called uroporphyrinogen 1 synthase is also called as HMB synthase because the other name for this uroporphyrinogen is called hydroxymethylbilane. It's also called as PBGD aminase. This one enzyme has three names. Okay. 
when this enzyme is defective what happens pbg will accumulate that is porphobilinogen will accumulate okay this leads to a condition called acute intermittent porphyria okay so here if you see the symptoms of acute intermittent porphyria they will have intermittent attacks of abdominal pain with neuropsychiatric symptoms such as confusion agitation and seizures okay but they won't present with photosensitivity which is a classical feature of porphyria why because photosensitivity will be seen only in those porphyrias where porphyrins will accumulate okay if you see here there is no porphyrin production at all the step is even blocked even before that so they won't have any photosensitivity these patients will not have any photosensitivity okay porphyrin precursors if they accumulate they can deposit in the skin and they can trigger oxidative species generation which can lead to photosensitivity in this condition that step is not at all there so it is blocked even well ahead of that so there won't be any photosensitivity in those patients with acute intermittent porphyria okay why patients with acute intermittent porphyria present with abdominal pain and neuropsychiatric symptoms okay that is because of the defect there will be accumulation of ala and pbg okay ala and pbg are toxic to neurons okay of both central nervous system and peripheral nervous system okay that is the reason why they develop abdominal pain and neuropsychiatric symptoms okay abdominal pain and neuropsychiatric symptoms are the classical features of acute porphyria okay unexplained abdominal pain Okay, unexplained neuropsychiatric symptoms are the classical features of porphyria, acute porphyria. But this porphyria will not manifest every time. Only when they are exposed to certain triggering factors, the porphyria will be manifested. What are those triggering factors? These are those triggering factors. Steroidal hormones can act as a triggering factor. Drugs can act as a triggering factor. Alcohol can act as a triggering factor. Starvation can act as a triggering factor. Okay. Patients with porphyria should avoid taking drugs that induce cytochrome P450 enzymes in the liver. Why? Because when they take the drug which is going to be metabolized by cytochrome P450, cytochrome P450 enzymes will be increased. The synthesis of that enzyme will increase. When that enzyme synthesis increases, heme levels will decrease because those enzymes need heme. So, they take up all heme. So, heme levels will come down. Okay. This, when the heme levels come down, the feedback inhibition of heme on ALA synthesis is lost. Okay. So, ALA synthesis is activated. Okay. Heme synthesis is initiated. So, because of the block, there will be accumulation of again ALA and PBG. So, that will lead to clinical features. Okay. Fine. So, how do you manage porphyria? Okay. Management of porphyria depends upon the diagnosis first. Okay. Fine. How do you diagnose them? For example, in acute intermittent porphyria, you get a urine sample from the patient and check for ALA and PBG in the urine sample. Okay, one, they will be high in this urine sample. Treatment, you give him, you give hematin infusion. Okay, that is going to do two things. It is going to replenish the heme, which is already lacking. At the same time, that is going to inhibit ALA synthase. So, attacks will come down. Okay, then you give glucose. As I told you earlier, glucose inhibits ALA synthase by unknown mechanisms. So, intravenous infusion of hematin and glucose is one of the major treatment options for porphyria. Okay. That's it. Okay, now we'll go to cutaneous porphyria. Okay, I'll tell you one example of cutaneous porphyria here. Okay, so cutaneous porphyria happens and there's a block in the later stages of the porphyrin, later stages of the heme synthesis. Okay, one of the later enzymes that can lead to cutaneous porphyria is this uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase. What is the name of that porphyria? Okay, so here if you see, it is characterized by accumulation of porphyrinogens in the skin. Okay. And this porphyrinogens will get oxidized to porphyrins. Okay. So, uroporphyrinogen will be converted to uroporphyrin. Coproporphyrin will be converted to coproporphyrin. And these porphyrins can go and settle in the skin. When they are exposed to sunlight, they will form free radicals, which will cause photosensitivity and skin damage. That's why they have blisters. These patients will have blisters in their cutaneous skin. Okay. The name of that porphyria is called porphyria cutanea tarda. Okay, it's the most common type of porphyria. Okay, because due to the effect of the enzyme called uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase, this leads to accumulation of uroporphyrinogen 3, okay, which will be converted to uroporphyrin, which will be deposited in the skin, leading to photosensitivity. So, they have a chronic low grade photosensitivity, blistering of skin when they are exposed to sunlight. Okay, so how do you treat them? You have to avoid exposure to sunlight. Yeah, they have to apply sunscreens 
to prevent photosensitivity and they have to take a lot of compounds called antioxidants to prevent oxidative damage induced by these porphyrin compounds such as vitamin E intake and beta carotene intake. Okay, this is how their skin will look like. See, they have blisters. Their skin will look erythematous because of photosensitivity. Okay, in patients with porphyria, cutanea, tarda. Okay, this is caused due to the defect in the enzyme, uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase. Okay, now let's go to the third classification. Okay, so that's something called acquired porphyria. Whatever we have, so, we have seen so far, acute intermittent porphyria, porphyria, cutanea, tarda, two important porphyrias. There are other porphyrias as well. We are not going to dis discuss that in this topic. Okay. So these two topic, these two porphyrias, AIP and PCT, can be uncongenital. Okay. There are something called acquired porphyrias. What are those acquired porphyrias? One of the major reasons for acquired porphyria is lead poisoning. Okay. Why? Lead poisoning is going to inhibit two enzymes, ALA dehydratase and ferrochelatase. Okay. So these are the enzymes of heme synthesis. So that is going to lead to porphyrias. Any defect in the synthesis of the heme will lead to porphyria. Okay. So this will lead to anemia and that will lead to porphyria. That's it. Okay. Predominantly they will cause anemia. They can also give a picture of porphyria. So that's it. To summarize, heme is made up of a tetrapyrrole ring structure with heme at its center. Heme synthesis occurs in erythroid cells of bone marrow, liver and in almost all cells. Okay. The rate limiting enzyme of heme synthesis is ALA synthase. The existing two isoforms, ALA synthase 1 and ALA synthase 2. Okay. ALA synthase 1 is found in the liver. ALA synthase 1 shows or is sensitive to feedback inhibition by heme and as well as glucose. ALA synthase 2, which is found in the bone marrow, okay, is not subjected to feedback inhibition by heme. It can be regulated by iron levels in the blood. Okay, 1. Okay. Then porphyrias can be classified into Classified based upon the three types, based upon the presentation as acute porphyria and cutaneous porphyria, okay. Then based upon the cause like congenital and acquired, okay. And based upon the site as erythropoietic and hepatic porphyrias, okay. When in acute porphyrias, you will have abdominal pain and neuropsychiatric symptoms, photosensitivity will not be there. Because photosensitivity will happen only when there is a block in the pathway leading to the accumulation of porphyrins, okay. So there won't be any photosensitivity in acute porphyria. Okay. So, acute intermittent porphyria will have abdominal pain and neurosecretic nose, but there won't be any photosensitivity. One. Porphyria cutanea tarda, which is an excellent example of cutaneous porphyria, caused due to different enzyme called uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase. Okay. Where uroporphyrinogens will accumulate, which will be converted to uroporphyrins, which will lead to oxidative stress in the skin that leads to photosensitivity. Okay. How do you treat these porphyrias? You can treat the porphyria by giving intravenous infusion of hematin and glucose. Hematin will inhibit ALA synthase and glucose also will inhibit ALA synthase by unknown mechanisms. That's it. Okay, thanks.